was a setup. Ross lives to see it another day, my boy. Oh, that was a setup. That I love whole it. thing was a setup. I love it, man. <laughs> that was a setup the entire time. 10 out of 10, my boy. 10 out of 10. Oh! It was a swerve. My God, bro. He was playing Brock the entire time. Son of a fucking bitch, man. He said, son of a. Are you serious? Why they shocked? Are you serious? You you hurt. Oh, All you stop. guys are like, awesome. Stay clutch and stay rogue. Appreciate it. It's over. It's over. So he just let they that's, let him just easily come in. That's bullshit, bro. Y'all just couldn't let Brock have a goddamn ill, bro. I tell you, bro. The chat not liking that, bro. I mean, people said told y'all. I mean. I was hoping they would. The thing is, they is didn't they need Man. him to win the Rumble to have that match. Y'all seen the clips? How excited we were on stream when Brock Lesnar lost the WWE Championship because of Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman turning on him and uh, screwing him out of the title. We were elated. Dub was happy. It was it was a good time. Drew Billy was in a good mood. It was great. And then later on that night in the Men's Royal Rumble, entrance number 30, you hear Brock Lesnar's music. And then you can see the disappointment. But maybe there was a little bit of hope. Maybe, just maybe, he won't win the match. But once again, we're talking about Vince and WWE and his love for Brock Lesnar and wanting to have Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns have their match at this year's WrestleMania. So, it was kind of plain to see once he came out there at number 30. He was going to win the match. And you saw our disappointment when he actually won the men's Royal Rumble match. I'm going to get into all that. This is going to be a good one. Uh, it is actually 3.36 in the morning. Just came from Dub's house. Got to bring this video to you guys. Um, because I got to really get my thoughts out before I go to bed. Let's get right into this video. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross. Back at it again with another video. So, got to get my thoughts and opinions on the 2022 Royal Rumble this year. Um, this was a uh, okay Royal Rumble. Um, I will say this. I think a lot of us can agree. The women's Royal Rumble match was a lot better than the men's for sure. I'm going to go down through the list of the matches, what I thought, and what the potential outcomes may be leading up to Elimination Chamber and leading up to WrestleMania uh, this year. Uh, but first and foremost, before I get into it, I just want to thank everyone that was a part of our stream. We had, I think the most viewers we had at one point was 4K. 4,000 of y'all joined the stream was going crazy in the chat we had a great time and uh we're looking forward to doing a live stream reactions of the elimination chamber uh later next month so be on the lookout for that that's gonna be fun uh but yeah if you missed those streams man make sure you guys definitely check it uh check them out uh try to be there for them if you can the stream is still up so you can definitely go watch some of the highlights someone has graciously time stamped some of our uh our reactions to some of the stuff that happened at the pay-per-view so definitely go check it out on the in the clutch ent main page but first things first let's start with the first match i'm going to try to go in order uh first match being the universal championship be between roman reigns and seth rollins i will say I was not expecting this match to start it off. You kind of knew something was going to happen since they were starting off the match. But nevertheless, it was, in my opinion, the best match of the night. And for multiple reasons. Can we first acknowledge the fact the challenger usually comes out to the ring first and then the champion. But this time, Roman came out first. And Seth came out to the shield music with the shield gear through the crowd and roman was pissed and i loved it only because what seth has been trying to do 
He's been trying to get into Roman's head. He's basically like pretty much since I was, you know, since I screwed you over when we was in the shield, since I stabbed you in the back, I pretty much made you the man you are today. And I like that, that the mind games. I thought that was dope. That was very entertaining. I was looking forward to how this match was going to play out. And I want to say for the majority of the match, Seth was always ahead of Roman mentally knew what he was gonna do he you know roman had some good strong spots but seth always stayed a step ahead and if you guys watch the stream i called it seth was trapped in the guillotine hold i called this spot seth trying to edge his way to the uh to the ropes to break the hold and i said if i'm roman i do not break the hold i put i'll keep that hold on and even after the five count. And that's exactly what he did. Roman went rogue. The best way we love when he goes rogue. He went mega rogue. And he was choking Seth out. Bell had already rung. Roman got disqualified. Champion's advantage. He doesn't lose the title. He knows that. It's a heel-like thing to do. Roman is a heel. So what he did made sense in his character. He choked him out. He sent him to the gulags. He was not letting go of that hold. Not only did he send him to the gulags, he he did something that I thought was pretty cool. It's a callback to when Seth hit him in the back with the steel chair when he turned on the shield. Roman got the chair, went out, went outside the ring, got the chair, went back in the ring, hit him in the back while Seth was getting up. And then as he was, you know, laid in some good chair shots, he's about to leave. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm not done with you yet and beat the living crap out of him to the point where the chair was deformed and warped then walked up the ramp like this is what i do this is i took care of business i loved it that was great i'm i know some of y'all are oh he still he couldn't beat couldn't beat seth it's part of a storyline that probably they're going with and it just it makes sense roman is a heel y'all He's going to cheat to win sometimes. And this is one of those situations where Seth can say, you couldn't beat me. So they can continue the feud, which I actually hope they do. So this was, that started off the show great. I love that. Some of y'all may not like it. Some of y'all want Seth to win, but it's not, Seth is not beating Roman. Especially not this rogue Roman. He went mega rogue. I love it. That was great. That was a highlight for me, the best match of the night. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, man. So that's my opinions on that. And of course, they're probably going to continue the feud at some point. But I'm going to get into my theories on that towards the end of this uh, video. So uh, I want to say the next match was the Women's Royal Rumble. And it was quite enjoyable to see some of the, the people we haven't seen in a while. Like Michelle McCool. Uh, what I really thought, Mickey James being the Impact uh, Women's Champion or whatnot. Her being there while having the championship on her. That was cool. You don't really see Vince McMahon allowing other champions into his company. So I thought that was cool. You know, they're kind of taking a page out of AEW here because AEW does the same thing. So to see that, I thought that was dope to see Mickey James out there. Um, of course, you saw a lot of jobbers and people, free agents and stuff. But once Ronda's music hit, I knew it was over. I made a video a couple days ago, the rumors of Ronda coming back. And I said, if Ronda comes back, she's winning. And I, you know, I was hoping maybe Bianca Belair could pull out the win. I know a lot of you guys want to live to win, but once I heard uh, Ronda's uh, music, it was raps. It was done. It didn't matter who was in that ring. Ronda was winning. Obviously, Ronda did end up winning the Women's Royal Rumble, and it looks like most likely she's not going to face Charlotte because Charlotte, that's not the money match. We all know what the money match is. Ronda. Becky, no Charlotte this time, just them two how it should originally been, and I think that's going to be entertaining, I believe she's going to be on Monday Night Raw, so she's probably going to have something to say, that's going to probably bring some views in, I know some people are like, damn, that's kind of messed up for all the women that are there, but we know that's the money match for WrestleMania, so Ronda, Becky, that's the money match, that's the match that people are going to really want to see, I want to see it just one-on-one, -on -one. Just off the promos alone, they're back and forth. I think it's going to be very entertaining. Um, I want to see 
how the characters are going to be. If they're going to keep Becky Lynch's heel, I think most likely they will. And I can see, you know, maybe Ronda being a face in this situation. I don't know. Because, you know, of course, some of us fans remember the, the shit she was talking on social media about wrestling fans. So I didn't forget about that. It'll be interesting to see where they take their characters. But we know that's the money match. That's a main event match. Depending on how they book it. If it's trash, whatever. But it just depends on how they book it from now to WrestleMania. Next match after that was the piss break match. Becky Lynch versus Dewdrop. I didn't care about that match. If you cared about that match, cool for you. I'm sorry. You can say that's disrespectful. I mean, we was watching it. But we was also, you know, looking at the chat and engaging with the chat, getting food, getting drinks. I, I, that's the piss break match. That's the do anything other than watch that match because I didn't care. I, I didn't even know it was a match on the card until I checked like a few days ago. I didn't care. Didn't care. We knew Becky was winning. Dewdrop was not winning the, the Raw Women's Championship. So we can gloss over that. Did not care about that match. It was whatever. Probably shouldn't have even been on the card. Would have made the show a little bit, uh, you know, shorter. That match should have not been on the card. But the next match, Brock versus Bobby Lashley. Of course, if you watch the stream, up, he didn't say nothing until the match was over. And it was just me and Brandon holding it down on commentary on the live stream. Uh, I will say this. For those who were so excited, and I was one of those people that was potentially excited, first time ever dream match, promo package they had for it, built it up as like something epic. That match was not epic until Roman came out. I'm going to just keep it a stat. It was a cool moment, a couple cool moments. Uh, I want to say Brock suplexing Bobby, and then Bobby returning a suplex to Brock. I thought that was cool. And then after that, it kind of, it kind of hit the usual rock beats uh it, it just once the referee got knocked down i knew there was going to be some interference i was thinking it was going to be the usos but when roman came out there spear brock to oblivion and then paul Heyman gave roman the title the wwe championship to hit brock lesnar over the head with it i was like beautiful it was all part of their plan to screw over Brock Lesnar, including Paul Heyman. And a lot of you guys have said it. Uh, we, I mean, you know, we felt it was going to happen. This was all kind of a big plan. And Paul was just playing Brock, which made sense. There was little plants and seeds here and there about it. So I enjoyed that. Uh, it was That made the match. And then, of course, Bobby Lashley getting the pin one, two, three. Granted... Bobby really didn't look that strong against Brock. I'm going to just keep it a stack. He didn't look that strong against Brock at all. I think that was a wasted opportunity. They, they really didn't go all out like they should have for that match. But either way, it was just to set up another, uh, another situation. So, once again, Bobby Lashley is the WWE champion. And uh, it'll be interesting to see who he faces at this year's WrestleMania. But, uh, yeah. I'm okay with that decision. Get... He wasn't so Brock was not supposed to win the championship anyway at WWE Day One. It wasn't he wasn't even supposed to be the champ. They just had to pull an audible. Well, they didn't even have to pull that particular audible. That's neither here nor there. But it works out. They're not doing the unification of the titles. And you know, you kind of know what happened at the end of the pay-per-view. But uh that was that was the highlight of that match. Roman going extra rogue again, taking care of business taking matters into his own hands it was all part of the plan and paul Heyman was on it in on it so it's going to be interesting to see what happens on monday night and friday night smackdown so they do have some intrigue coming out of this pay-per-view then after that match was miz and maurice versus edge and beth phoenix i didn't really too much care about this match was it enjoyable Yes, it was. This match was actually somewhat enjoyable. It had some cool spots. Um, it was cool to see the double spear on Miz. To see Beth and Edge uh, hit Beth, Phoen uh, Beth Phoenix finishing move together on both opponents. I thought that was pretty cool. It was some cool moments, but let this feud be done. Edge has already beaten Miz twice. Let's get, let's get Edge into another meaningful feud. 
I'm done. No more of that. So that was it was serviceable. But after coming off that high of seeing uh, Roman uh, screw over Brock, it was kind of hard to follow that, in my opinion. But it was it is it was what it was. You know, it wasn't bad, but it's nothing that you will go back to this pay per view to watch. Be honest with you. So, and then we get to the men's Royal Rumble match, which was it was hella lackluster. It was some cool moments. Bad Bunny coming out there doing some nice wrestling moves. Once again, for someone that's not a wrestler, he shows up and impress. Uh, he, he shows out and, and impress every time. Um, Johnny Knoxville, that was a cool little moment. Shane being in there, that was kind of thrown together. It was a shock to see him. It was kind of cool, but at the same time, it was a waste of a spot. And I believe Shane eliminated Kevin, eliminated Kevin Owens, if I'm not mistaken. I was like, yo, what the fuck is Shane doing out here? You could have gave that spot to anybody else. Uh, AJ Styles coming in at number one, hoping he was going to be the Iron Man of this match. Did not happen. Kevin Owens had, a, a, the crowd was behind him too. Uh, he did not end up winning it. Drew McIntyre making his return. I didn't think he was going to make his return so soon. But to see him there, he got a nice reaction. Ultimately, it didn't work out. Once Brock Lesnar's music hit, at number 30, it was done, though. And it, it, I was hoping maybe, just maybe they could pull a swerve. What would have been great is the last two people were in the ring. Brock, Drew. They have history. Drew eliminated Brock Lesnar. 2020 Royal Rumble. Yeah. He eliminated Brock Lesnar. And then ended up winning that same Royal Rumble to face him at WrestleMania. And obviously the pandemic happened. Wasn't in front of a crowd. Kind of sucked. To recreate that moment was cool. And I was hoping if they do it, they could this would be a dope swerve. Maybe potentially give Drew his moment. But once again, it Vince loved him some Brock and, and Roman Reigns as his main event. So once you really think about who's in the ring, you kind of kind of knew what was going to happen there. And obviously, Brock Lesnar wins the Royal Rumble. And uh, you know who he's going to face. It's kind of obvious. He's going to end up probably facing Roman Reigns at this year's WrestleMania. And I made a comment earlier in this video. Seth is not done yet. I personally, me, would love, and I think this would be great, if Seth got inserted into that match and made it a triple threat match. Yes, you can say we've already seen Roman main event WrestleMania in a triple threat match, and it was great. But this would be even better only because Seth has history with Roman. Brock has history with Seth. Roman has history with both of them. If you guys remember at WrestleMania 31, Seth cashed in his money in the bank briefcase to win the WWE Championship at that WrestleMania. He stole the championship from them, pretty much. And it, it comes full circle. Another WrestleMania. They main event all three guys in that match. Sign me up. Because I'm sorry. I don't want to see Roman versus Brock again. There's only so many times we can see that. And I think the better story to tell... Seth has a point. You can never beat me. I've already proved I've, I've beaten Brock before. Like, I've beaten both of you guys before. Actual. You know, in fact, I've beaten Brock at WrestleMania too. Something that you haven't done, Roman. So, I, I think that would be cool. That would be a great story to tell. I don't know. Just that triple threat match. Sign me up. I don't know how they get to that. I know the Elimination Chamber is, is coming up uh, next. So maybe Seth can insert himself because I believe whoever wins the Elimination Chamber may get to, you know, face a champion. I believe so. That's how the stipulation should be. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If Seth gets in the Elimination Chamber and wins, you know he's going for Roman. If they set it up that way, I'm all for it. That's cool. Sign me up. I think that would be a better main event, and I think we all as fans would like it because the possibilities now, it's, it, it increases. Who do we have win? I still think probably Roman will probably end up winning, but 
still it would be it would be a fresh matchup that i think the fans would love the story is there it's there so but overall this pay-per-view was okay at best it was it was okay and that's probably a it shouldn't be okay for a Royal Rumble. It was it was just like it was, it was cool. It, it was what it was. It had some high moments and had some very low moments. The men's uh, <laughs> uh, Royal Rumble was definitely one of those lower moments. And uh, Dewdrop uh, and Becky Lynch that was a, a kind of a low moment um, in my personal opinion. And also the fact that <laughs> UFC individuals have pretty much taken over WWE. A former UFC champion in Ronda Rousey wins the Royal Rumble. Former UFC champion in Brock Lesnar wins the men's Royal Rumble. UFC WWE. That's what happened at this pay-per-view, man. But comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys okay with how uh, these matches ended up? Are you guys looking forward to what's going to happen on Monday night and uh, this Friday night coming up? Uh, also... Are you guys intrigued in a Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar match for the Universal Championship? Let me know down below. I want to get your thoughts and opinions. Let's have a discussion. Let's have a conversation in the, in the comment section down below. I know this is going to be a crazy video. Uh, and if you haven't already, man, just hit the like button, man. I'm staying up late for you guys. It's almost 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm about to go edit this video before I even touch a pillow. Before I even go to bed, because I want to make sure I get this out to you guys uh, as early as possible whenever you guys see this video. Hopefully, you guys will. You'll probably be watching this on Sunday. So, uh, thank you guys so much for all the love and support on the stream. Appreciate all the love and support on this channel. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all in the next one.